ain't got time for nobody being in nobody not mine. Um, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with a new video. Please make sure you start this video off by clicking that thumbs up button. Also make sure that you share this video on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or wherever you share our videos. If you are uh, tweeting about our video on Twitter, use the hashtag The Scorpion Show. Also do the same on Instagram so I can like your photo. Shout out to everybody that watched all of last week's videos. I know this video was late, but look, we are here. Um, also, make sure tomorrow, well, if you're watching this on Wednesday, April the 1st, go over to younow.com slash The Scorpion Show. It will be me and my mom taking your calls. We'll be doing the live show. So if you have anything going on that you need advice from, she's going to give it to you straight. So, um, yeah, the number to call in is 267-776-4777. And that's on younow.com slash the Scorpion Show at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So don't get the times messed up. If you miss the show, it will be recorded, so it will also be on YouTube. So you can watch it like you did last week. And I want to say thank you to those who are donating to uh, The Scorpion Show and Sweet Addiction TV Presents The Blackout. We have just raised over $1,000, so thank you all <laughs> so much for donating. And if you have not donated and you would like to, the link is inside the more info box. You can donate whatever you can to us. It's greatly appreciated. And there was another announcement that I had to make and I forgot. But if I remember it, it will come to me. So, um, it's not really a bunch of, you know, a bunch of topics to go over, but I did get... And, and I did say that I was going to do a video for the Eon and Karuchi thing, but I was not home on Saturday night. I was out having a good time. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that, y'all. But, you know, me and Mikkel are here, so we can discuss Eon and Karuchi. And I know you watched it. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I, I watched it yesterday. I finally got a chance to watch it. Uh -huh. And it was good. Did it wasn't. I watched it up here. No, I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. oh, I had DVR'd it. Oh, did you? Because mm -hmm. oh, I knew I was going out. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't. It always works. Yes, thank sure you. Yeah, get it right. Always. Thank you. I'm sure. <laughs> what you, why are you looking at me like that for? I'm sure it does, but go ahead. <laughs> no, so Karuchi Tran sat down with Iyala to discuss her breakup with, her recent breakup with Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. And um, Iyala, pretty much, she was not letting... Karuchi let anything slide like oh I'm young or we're human or you know she just was like no 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 stop you know Iyala was just basically getting her together the whole time but making her look at herself and make her look deep inside and just see that you know as a woman she's, she was hurt um, she just allowed things to happen for me for me I think it was great because a lot of women and men that's going through what she's going through can learn a lot from watching that process Karuchi had with Iyala. And it brought me back to that time where, remember when we interviewed her and we was like, you know, if you could fix anybody's life, who could you fix? And she was like, it doesn't matter who it is because we all relate to the situations. And I think that the words that Iyala gave to Karuchi, the thought process, I think that a lot of women that's going through what she's going through, I hope that, that they were thinking deep inside themselves too, from it. It, it wasn't like the best Iyana Fix My Life therapy session, but it was good for a person like her. Because Karuchi is a person that holds too much in, keep things to herself, thinking, oh, I can deal with it, I can handle it. And then Iyana told her, you're, not, you're just not that strong to do that. Fuck is going on? Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You can, you can okay. Say. Um, I didn't really particularly care for this Iyana fix my life. I think that a lot of stuff that she was saying, not Iyana, but Karuchi, what she was saying was stuff that we already knew. We knew she wasn't strong. We knew that she was weak when it came to Chris Brown. We we knew all these things about her. There was nothing that she said in the uh, in the segment that really got me to go, oh wow. Like it to me it felt like Iyana was beating a dead horse. You know, and even at the end of the interview, I still didn't get 
anything from it. Like, I didn't get anything from it other than this girl is not strong enough. She's not strong enough to be with somebody like Chris Brown. As a matter of fact, she's not strong enough to be with any man. Because, well, not any man. But she's not strong enough to be with any man that does what Chris Brown does. Until she learns until how to she stop learns accepting how to, that. Yeah, until she learns how to stop accepting that. And until, until she gets a backbone. Mm -hmm. You know, the part that really got me throughout the whole interview was when she spoke about how she was with him one Christmas, and then he told her he'll be back. Yes, and was what we yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know that either. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? You turn the TV and see. Can you throw me that uh, that green thing? Can you imagine? No, I can't, I can't imagine because I would be going off. Mm -hmm. And you think I'm gonna go back with you? Yeah. And you and then, she, then the excuse that she gave, oh, because she he told me that we they were just still friends. And I'm looking mm -hmm. like, this no. Is let me tell you something. She was she's just a woman that has just learned to accept things yeah. and keep it moving. And she just keep it moving. And that's why I just believe that there was nothing that there was nothing in this Yano fix my life that I got from it. I didn't get anything from it. I also felt as though I don't know. To me, in the beginning, when they stopped the interview, when her people stopped the interview, I didn't understand why. Because the gist of the interview was you you wanted to talk about what it was that was going on between you and Chris Brown. And you wanted the world to know why it is that you stayed and why it is that you're not staying anymore. But for some reason, your management, your team got upset with how the interview was going. But I'm thinking, like, well, where is it going? To me, it wasn't going anywhere just yet. Like, yeah, She was just talking about, you know... You know I'm um, going to church and things like that. Yeah, but it just Yama's didn't... like, you know, the things that you're trying to do for him, you need to be doing for yourself. You need to yeah. apply that to yourself. To yourself, because you're, yeah, you're trying to fix his life by doing all these things. But you know, it ain't even working for you. Because if it was working for you, you wouldn't even be with this cat. Because he's still. I just didn't really learn anything from this segment. Karuchi held a lot of stuff back. Even with the tears, she was still holding back. I'm sorry, but why was Christina Milian there? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know, no, because that's supposed when you when you have a good girfriend. Yeah, but, as clear, you know, but, saying, but clearly, clearly, clearly Christina she was not a good girlfriend because she didn't know yeah. nothing. She uh, like she tried to tell, uh, no, like, and then she what? tried to flip, it and you was like, yeah. no. And I'm like, you didn't say nothing. You didn't say nothing. I don't even her. think that was a minute segment. Where yes, her. I'm like, first of all, if. if if you are a good friend yeah. to anybody, yeah. you should be in their not just in their lives, but you should be telling them the wrongs that they're doing and the rights that they're doing. Yeah. Don't just point just one thing wrong. Now, if you know that your good, good girlfriend is being embarrassed by this famous guy, he fucking anybody who he want to fuck, and he's still going back to you, like, why do you keep letting him do that to you? Because she was why? in the same predicament with the dream. Yeah, so I don't even know how she was even able to give advice, but she was once in that same predicament. And then uh, Karuchi yeah, really couldn't. Right then, right then like yeah. Karuchi, Karuchi, like with her, what she said about her mom, what she said about her dad. Karuchi is just a person that just learns how to take things yeah. and go. And that's not who you should be. She should start letting that shit off her chest because clearly she's not strong enough to deal with all of that. Start letting that out. Start letting people know how you feel. And then when you said that your mother couldn't tell you anything about dating a man like that's real fucked up she got a lot of deep issues that maybe her team wouldn't let Iyana delve into because mm -hmm. she has to dig Iyana's a person that likes to dig at the root mm -hmm. so if you're stopping Iyana from digging at the root bitch she's only going to trim the bush mm -hmm. and you're still going to have those deep rooted issues mm -hmm. And that's why Karuchi is still going to be going what she's going through because she's got people around her that's not good for her. Mm -hmm. And until she gets rid of those people, she won't be able to succeed and, 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 and push farther. That's what she needs. Karuchi, now you know what you want to set for a man. You want to set the man cheating on you. You should not go back with a man that has been publicly humiliating you on social media, saying all the sexual things that you're supposed to do. What you do in your bedroom is supposed to be between you and whoever you deal with. Not you, whoever you deal with, and then social media, and then all the people that love him, and then you got everybody hating on you and making you look stupid. You already knew you looked stupid, and again, you just took the punch and you just kept it going. When does this stop? When does this, this stop for you? When can you just say, no motherfucking more? When you sat there and Yana asked you, are you going to go back with Chris Brown? You sat there and thought, when you got to think about anything without a quick reaction like that, then you still are in love with that man and you still willing to do whatever it is that he, you want you to let him do whatever the fuck he want to do. And you should not let a man do that to you. And any other female or the men out here listening, do not let anybody do that to you. Again, don't ever, ever, ever make yourself a doormat that says welcome. That just step all over you.
you better get the fuck up and start saying no. Learn how to say no. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not going through this. Karucha, you said it yourself. Chris Brown is a kid. He's a kid, and you and you just sitting around waiting. Don't be sitting around waiting for no man to grow up. That's how you're going to miss your real man. That wasn't, he's not for you. He is somebody that is put in your life to show you this is not what you need in your life. And for the women that watch, this, women and men, because everybody can learn. For the people that watch, this is a lesson for you too. To not accept anybody like that into your life. Sometimes people have to go through things and you learn through their mistakes. So I hope that y'all learn through her mistakes to say, no more. I don't give a fuck how good the dick is, how good the money is. Because when it all comes down to it, your emotional state is important. And she's not emotionally strong to just deal with that. So she just keep it going. Like, no, don't ever let nobody do that to you. So, you know, I was just... You probably didn't get anything out of it, but I did because I never really paid attention to Karuchi and Chris Brown. Every time I hear, oh, they're together, they're not together. They're together, they're not together. And that baby, come on, man, you you really can't be that bad because you knew he was out there fucking all these girls. And you still allow him to get in your bed and fuck you too. And a lot of women be like, I don't care. No, come on now. Don't go through that. Don't do that to yourself. He can F whoever he wants as long as he come back to me. No. Mm -hmm. That dick should be only for you and nobody else to share with. Because I ain't sharing anything of mine. Not unless it's, you know, money or something. But, you know, anything else like that, fuck no. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry I had to get that off. Because I just wanted to go off. Like, I, And I hope Karuchi watches. And I hope that you guys pass it to Karuchi. And Christina Milian, you being on there just shows that you're not her best friend. Because a best friend would tell you you the fuck wrong. Why you keep going back to that man and he keep cheating on you? And he making videos on YouTube. I don't know if I want to be with Karuchi or Rihanna. But, then again, like you said, she don't know what the fuck she wants. And then, like, Christina Milian, and this is no shade because I like her, but come on now. You know he, you, don't, it's, it's some kind of twisted way. The Dream got kids by, the Dream got kids by Lil Wayne. She they, got, they, she, the she Dream got, and Lil Wayne has a baby right. with Nivea. And then you going around and go fuck yeah. their dad? Like, come on. Y'all all fucked up. Hollywood is just fucked up. Ain't nothing you here saying, oh, no, this would not be right if I do this. This would not be right. That if I have a kid by Lil Wayne, then everybody's brothers and sisters and on like on both sides of some shit. Like, come on. I can't even think straight. I can't. I'm over it. Highly fucking weird. That's what it is. Dumb ass. So, uh, Sierra. That's another one. Shout out to Sierra because I see that. What's going on? Oh, you just fucking like that. So, Sierra is going on tour. She's going on the Jackie tour this May in support of her sixth album. I'm not sure when the album is coming out. Can you just plug that somewhere? Because I'm not for the boom. Just plug it in my computer. It's fine. Sorry for the interruption of the yeah. show. So Sierra's going on tour in May. She's going to be doing some some tour dates like the House of Blues. I know she's supposed to be coming to somewhere in Pennsylvania. She's supposed to be coming somewhere. I'm going to try to go to the show because I would love to go. I would love to have Sierra come on our show too. I really, really would love for her to come on the show. So I'm going to try to... Y'all told me that Lisa Ellis, I've been tweeting her, I ain't getting no response, so I don't know where to go. But I'm going to keep trying, because I want her on. And um, she released her, what is it, her CD cover today? What's the name of her album? It's called Jackie. She named it Oh, in, it is Jackie. Yeah, she named it in after her mother. Because I guess that was like her big inspiration since she had a baby or something like that. Because you know she's been going through it at the that future thing. Oh my God. But yeah, speaking of that, oh my God, let's just say this. Dumb people like posts that they shouldn't post, that they shouldn't do it. And I don't want to go get into it, but yeah, we acknowledge it. All right. So, Nene and Kim getting a show. <laughs> I know that they had made up. You know what? Nene is just so fake. So fake. I didn't know they made up. A lot of people told me when I posted that they said, well, where you been? They've been made up, and I didn't know. Yeah, they, listen. I just saw a picture of them together. 
Nene would do anything for a dollar. That's that's the point blank. She do anything for a dollar. Did I do I love Nene and Kim together? Yes, they had a lot of fun, drunken moments together, and I relived some of that on Hulu because they got one seasons one through six of the Real Housewives of Atlanta on there. They got every damn episode, and they really had some good fucking times together. So I don't, but you know that's been like maybe what four years maybe three years since they really, really had like good times together. So I don't know how the chemistry is going to be on the show. But as long as they're drinking, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to tune in. But I'm just surprised that Nene didn't get a show of her own on Bravo. So she's the queen of Bravo. And I'm the queen of the real house. I don't think anybody's just going to watch Nene by herself. No, she's not. That's why she needs to be on the show with somebody else. And as long as she's not antagonizing Kim... I am here for it. But I want to know what's the backstory to the show. What's the show? What's the show about? That's what I want to know. Nothing. Oh, you don't know what it is? Huh? You don't know what it's about? Because mm -hmm. I didn't find out what it was about. No, I just seen the picture where Nene was like, yes, me and Nene, me and Kim got a show together, such, 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 such. And then, Bravo, right? Yeah, coming on Bravo. I don't know when it's coming out, but Kim's show, her own show, is still doing good. What show? Yeah. Um, her and um, be Croy? Don't be targeted for the party. Yeah. I didn't even know that still came on. Yes. It's it's but our cousin I'll play with that. I didn't even know that still came on though. Mm-hmm. No yep. Problem. But it's been it's been doing good in the, on it. Whatever nights it came on, like on a Thursday or whatever, it was doing good for Bravo. This is like their third season. You don't even see commercials promoting it though. Do you? Mm-mm. No. That's it should be about to come back on though. It should be about to come back on. But yeah, Nene and Kim Hatton, congratulations to y'all. I did watch The Real Housewives of Atlanta this week. Can I just say, it was just good to see that the girls were on, like, on the same page. And I'm glad that Phaedra did not let her guard down when it came to, what's her name? Claudia. Did you see it? No. I wasn't well, anyway, like, they had, like, a heart-to-heart. And they were talking. They in the Philippines, and I guess since it's Claudia's trip, whenever they got to the resort, um, Claudia was just like, "I think the person that should get the biggest room is Phaedra, Phaedra because she's been going through what she was going through. So instead of everybody fighting, we're gonna get it, give it to her." And then they had a chance to talk. They Claudia talked about her own marriage and everything, and she was trying to get some stuff out of. Phaedra, but Phaedra's is like, no, I just don't want to talk about that. But what I will say is such, 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 such. It seemed like everybody was on the same page. Everybody had fun, and Nene wasn't there. Like, it, it, that always happens. Anytime she's not around, everybody's having fun. And then next week, we'll get a chance to see Kenya and Phaedra talk it out about you know, her calling her a whore and all of that stuff. It's like this season is dragging on. Yeah, I need it to be over. Yeah. I need it to be over. It seemed like it was supposed to have been over. Yeah. Because last time it was in the... This, around this time, the the reunion is on. And it's just... Cause maybe because they preempted it so many weeks for different other events. But, yeah, it was, it was okay. But I just love that everybody was on the same page. Even Candy got a chance to talk with Phaedra and was like... I don't like that you, you know, still talking to everybody else about our issues and our problems. She was like, if you can make up with Nene, you can make up with anybody on this show. When it came to Kenya, and then they kept showing the flashbacks of how Nene was reading Kim. I mean, Phaedra and everything. So, yeah. It was a good housewives. Not good enough to give a whole thing. I just, I'm glad that everybody on the same page. And I can't wait to see the talk with Maturo and uh, Phaedra. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, I seen this good story on Facebook, and you don't really hear stories like this all the time. Well, let's say a mother, let's say, um, who can I say? They, you got an older brother, and they take their two little sisters to the movies. She drops them off, they go see the Cinderella movie. There's a woman there who took her kids there, and she's trying to enjoy the movie, but the two kids are loud and everything. They're loud and... Not the two kids. Got dropped no, off. Two kids. The two kids that got dropped off, okay. they're, they're being loud and rude. Mm -hmm. And the mother was like, listen, I need y'all to please be quiet. She's like, I'm trying to enjoy 
this film with my kids because I don't know the next time I'll be able to come back because her husband had lost her job and everything and the kids were still being rude. The father, I mean, the, the, the child tells the mom, well, the older brother tells his mom what happened. So the mother went to Facebook and she wrote this letter apologizing for how rude her kids was. Mm. She said she was, um, you know, her kids had been punished and that their allowance money, she was taking their allowance money and was going to give this money to her and her husband and their family so they could enjoy another movie. But well, how does she know who to... But can I tell the story? Hello, I said she posted to Facebook. Well, I was she, getting ready to ask the same thing. Listen, because she put in there, I didn't know who you were. Oh. But, you know, Facebook has a share button. So they shared it around until they found the woman who it was. And what happened was they had a chance to meet on Good Morning America. And the lady gave the mother that was, you know, going through it. She gave the lady the money and their letters um, apologizing from the children. And this story went so viral that the lady whose husband lost his job, his um, people have been sending him job offers. So I just think that that was just a great story. And you don't see a lot of mothers like that that really care that they got bad ass children. So I just want to I just want to say thank you to that woman that did that. And now you know her and the lady had a chance to meet in the movie theaters or whatever. I just thought it was nice and everything and. If y'all go to the movie theaters, because sometimes you can't even just tell kids to shut the hell up. You got to tell grown people to shut up, too. Tell me about it. I know. Ask Dennis. I tell them, shut up. So, <laughs> so I just really, really, I just really love that story and it touched me. So, if you could um, help anybody out or anything like that, if your kids done anything, I don't want to say it like that, no. I don't want to say it like that. But if you could do something from the kindness of your heart, just do it. Because stories like that just, you know, that just, I don't know, it touched me. It really touched me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, can you talk about the, the T-Pain thing? Yeah, I was just pulling it up now. Um, I'm just making sure I read it right. Apparently T-Pain did a song um, that, you, that he used... Um, one of Aaliyah's unreleased vocals on it. And um, um, I'm just going to read an excerpt of it. It says, in a recent interview, T-Pain addressed his critics who said they didn't want to hear auto-tune next to Aaliyah's voice in his song. He had some thoughts on why she's so revered now. And this is T-Pain talking. People tend to, I don't know, I'm not trying to discredit Aaliyah in any kind of way, but you know how sometimes when people die, you know how somebody's an asshole their whole life, but when you go to their funeral, it's like this guy was the greatest man that ever walked. No, I'm not just saying, no, I'm not saying Aaliyah, but it's like because she passed, nobody is deserving of being next to her. Nobody's good enough. Nobody is good enough because she passed. If she was still alive, then everybody would have been like, oh, she's trying to be Beyonce. If she were still alive right now, but now that she's passed, it's like nobody could be her. Nobody could. That's just how I feel. That's how it goes, and that's how people are. People look for shit to talk about. Um, okay, now that was the quote that he made about it. Um, apparently, well, we all know that T-Pain is known for his auto-tune, and he's known for doing songs, you know, that requires auto-tune. Apparently, there were Aaliyah fans who didn't like the fact that he was doing this. Now, he had mentioned, I, this is not the thing that I read earlier, but he had mentioned that a while back, there was a group of people who were using her songs, and they asked him to be a part of it, something that they were doing, a project that they were doing, and he said no, but he would like to have one of her listening so he could use so they said okay fine and 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 just of them of him helping them in some way so that's how he was able to get one of her unreleased um vocals and use it for one of his songs now i'm gonna just say this because i said because my co-worker she actually brought this topic to me because i didn't know anything about it and she asked me how i felt about it and i'm just gonna say this i think that I, I totally get where T-Pain is coming from because there's t there's been many times where I'm on Twitter and I will see if it's, let's just say this, if it's Aaliyah's birthday, for instance, 
Whenever Aaliyah's birthday comes about, you always have those people on social media saying, oh, if Aaliyah was alive, there would be no Beyonce or there would be no Rihanna. And I always do what you just did, roll my eyes, because I'm like, how can you even say that? Like, that doesn't even come close to making sense. You know, you don't know where she would be or who would be here or not. She's not here, so she's You know, saying. so, but people tend to do that. And I get exactly what T-Pain is saying, because I've noticed that a lot of times, in Aaliyah's case, people like to compare her to a lot of artists that are but here today and i'm part, thinking like so when you compare you... her to people like rihanna and beyonce to anybody today it's like they're not even in the same lane so how are you even comparing okay. them so t-pain's argument is why is it that Aaliyah is on this pedestal whereas though somebody like me who's an artist just like she was why can't i use her vocal yeah. why is it that she's too her vocals are too good enough to be next to my auto tune and I had the same because question. Because if she Why was is, here today, she would probably use she them. Might, she actually them. may use them. We don't know because she's not here. She may not use them or she may use them. Who's to say? But I agree. Like, Why is it that Aaliyah is so good now that she's in depth that can't nobody use her stuff? I'll say this. I think that, you know, you, sometimes you do have people that use unreleased music and stuff like that. Just like you don't want nobody to touch Michael Jackson stuff. You don't want nobody to take his unfinished work. You don't want anybody to to use it. With me, what I think when I think of Aaliyah, I always think of Missy and I always think of Timberland. And for me, I think that they are the only ones that should be touching our unreleased music. Just like when that Drake thing was happening, where Drake was supposed to be making an album with her music. Like, why would you do it and not let Timberland and Missy handle that? I think that they are the ones that pushed her into this status because nobody was using the hip hop and art singing over hip hop and R and B beats. Nobody was doing that. Like their music, they were well ahead of their time. Do I do I have a problem with him using her vocals? No. If he does it right. If he does the song justice, it's no problem. But people will always fall out and cry about, you know, oh you can't do this with Aaliyah, you can't do that with Aaliyah. You know, people just gonna fall out regardless. And to to say my honest opinion, I think that Aaliyah would have been more famous for her movies than her music. Because I was there at that time, nobody was really buying her albums like that, okay? Well, where was at that? that time, listen, back at that time, I mean I'm just speaking for me. Cause I know at that time, you know, albums albums sold whether you were a star or not. Like your album could go gold. Versus other people selling like four million albums. Now today, nobody even, it, you barely go go because music is being everywhere on all different platforms, which we'll get to in a second. Um, in my honest opinion, I think that Aaliyah would have suffered in music and she would have been more famous for her movies because that's what she was going to. She was being pushed into movies instead of doing the music. She probably still did music here and there, but for people to say, oh, and they still say, oh, this person wouldn't be famous if this person was out. La, 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 no. I still tell y'all, Aaliyah would have suffered in music just like everybody else. Just like Brandy, just like Monica, just like Maya. Like, you know, but now since she's passed, everybody jumped on the Aaliyah bandwagon. Mm -hmm. It's true. It is true. Mm -hmm. It is true. Shit, I bought Aaliyah after she passed away. I didn't have that album, and it's good as hell. But I wouldn't have known how good it was at that time if I, if she hadn't passed, and you know, we all went out to go buy the music. All the only thing I would heard were the singles, and that is no disrespect to her. And I still think that Lifetime owe Aaliyah and her family an apology, and Wendy Williams you too for putting that fucking movie together because y'all did not tell it right. And y'all just did it like it was a high school play. So you yeah, dream if you're going to do it, God damn it, do it right. And make it a song. Can we make a song that's going to be a hit featuring Aaliyah? The Dream. I meant the dream. the dream. Who I said? T-Pain. Damn, I get them all mixed up. All mixed up. Yeah. So anyway, Jay-Z. Well, who has the rights to her music? I believe Black Ground Records. So are they the ones that would have given him the... Um, the yeah, how can you the, the obtain vocal? something like that? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure. When you said that about Missy and Timberland, I'm thinking like, but obviously don't they, don't they don't own it. Yeah. yeah, so if they don't own it, then I can't see Maybe why they should be the only two people. I think it's the record. I think her. I think it has something to do with her uncle owning it or something. Uh -huh. 
the Hankerson family, I think they own her vocals or whatever. But I still, I just still, I still. Think I mean, I get what you're saying about the whole Timberland and Missy thing because they were like when you think of Aaliyah, you think of those two. Why not? But I think of to... yeah. But what I was saying is, if if they don't own it, then why is it that that, that they shouldn't be the only two that? should be able to do her stuff because if they don't own it and T-Pain got permission from somebody else who owns it to use it mm -hmm. then he should be able to use it I mean I don't think he should have to go through Missy and Timberland and I don't think that Missy and Timberland should be able to be the only two that be to, should be able to use her stuff because there's other artists I don't know about the Drake situation I remember it but I don't know how his that particular project was going to turn out but there may be somebody who may come out and be able to use one of her vocals and you'd be like damn like this is this is really really good like for instance there is this song on YouTube, um, is it, I mean, this kind of has something to do, no, it doesn't really have anything to do with this, but, no, just, what I was about to say don't make sense at all, so I'm not going to say it, mm. but, <laughs> I just thought about it, like, that doesn't really make sense, but, yeah, like, I mean, I agree that if T-Pain, if you are going to do it, please do it right, mm. but I think everybody should be able to do it if they're going to do it right, and I do see where T-Pain is coming from. He wasn't trying to be disrespectful. He was just trying to get off his heart. What a lot of people see out there. It's like, why is it now that Aaliyah's on this pedestal and can't nobody use her stuff? Because since she's been dead, you know, people have put, all these brand new fans have put her on this pedestal. Like, you can't touch nobody's stuff. I mean, if you do it I right, you gotta like be you said, on the right, I think that some people think that he, because he's not on that caliber of a big yeah, but, star. But you know what? Doing. But, you, but, that may be so. You may be right. But T-Pain is very talented. I remember I saw T-Pain live. Yeah, I And I remember he started singing I without the... Yes. And I remember he started singing without the auditorium. And I was like, how the fuck does he use this auditorium? Because he was so good without it. And I'm like, why is he... You know, why is he using this auditorium? But I, like you said, it may be because he's not on that caliber that some people may think that he should be on. But nonetheless, T-Pain is very talented. And when he was out, people loved he him. He was popping. Yeah, he was, he was popping out. when he was out. So I think that, you know... Like you said, there's a lot of bandwagon fans. So maybe these bandwagon fans who are saying he shouldn't use it probably weren't around when T-Pain was popping. Mm -hmm. You know? So whatever the case. But yeah. it is what it is. The only... Can I, let me just say this. I'm be honest with you. I remember when Aaliyah died. And I will say this. The only Aaliyah fan... And I'm not saying this to be smart or anything. But the only Aaliyah fan that I knew at the time of her death was Anitra. Mm -hmm. Anitra. Because we was in high school at the time and Anitra lost it. And I was just like, wow, I didn't know people was that big of a fan. Because when Aaliyah was out, we were in high school, and Aaliyah wasn't as big in music mm -hmm. like she seems to be today. Like you said, she was being pushed into movies. So it was kind of like you was hearing her stuff on the radio, but it wasn't like you was hearing her stuff on the radio back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Like she wasn't that big of a star. Mm -hmm. The last recollection I have of Aaliyah when she gave away that Cadillac on 106 and Park. Before she died, the week that she died. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that because I it was a countdown. Thing, yeah. yeah, it was a countdown, mm -hmm. and they were giving. I, I am old. It was a. <laughs> it was a countdown that summer, mm -hmm. and Aaliyah was going to be the celebrity that gave away that Cadillac Jeep. That was when the Escalades kind of like when around the time when they first mm -hmm. came in mm -hmm. came mm -hmm. out, and she was giving away to the lucky one. And I remember it was a guy too, and. It, that whole summer, it was a countdown, and then finally that Friday, when it was, that Friday, and I and I found out later on that that Friday was actually not a live show. It was mm -hmm. taped because they don't do live shows mm -hmm. on Fridays. She came, and I remember she was dressed in all white, and she came, and she presented that guy, excuse me, with the Cadillac. But it just so happens that that, that week that that, that that aired, she was already in um, was the Bahamas. Bahamas. You know, doing her music video. That's why, to me, when she died, I was just like, "Wait a minute, she was just on one of the park the other day, and now she's dead." But at that time, I didn't know that they were shoot stuff live that she had already did that earlier in the week. But I mean, you know, that was my last recollection of her yes. being alive. And like I said, my friend Anitra was the only one at that time that I knew was a big fan of hers because I didn't know no other Aaliyah fans. I didn't. I didn't know any other because in two thousand one, who was like the Hot female singer in two thousand one. Destiny, it was Destiny's Child, but I'm saying the hot child, female solo singer. Destiny's Child was Brandy. Brandy had in two thousand one. Brandy had just came back out. Um, or was that two thousand two? I think that Bitch. was two thousand two. Wasn't that Full Moon? Full yeah, Moon, Full Moon, two thousand one or two thousand two? Let me Google that real quick. I could have sworn it was two thousand two. I could be wrong, y'all. Don't kill me, all the Brandy thing, because you know how y'all get. That could be two thousand two. 
You know how y'all get. That was 2002. Wait, let's just make sure. Cause I know around around I would say like around that spring 2001. Yeah. I knew March who, March 2002. I'm around around that around that spring time 2001. I know that Janet had just came out with an album and Offer You was number one for like ten weeks. Destiny's Child came out with their Survivor. album. Missy Elliott had came out with an album. Um, it was a whole lot going on. You know what? Through. I think in 2001, we didn't have the big female artists like we do today. I think everybody was big. Mm -hmm. Like, that's when radio used to be fun. Because Janet was number one, and then Destiny's Child pushed Janet out the number one spot. With Survivor, right? With Survivor. Yeah. And I think Missy album had came out in, like, May. Yeah, it was just like a whole lot of oh, music. Yeah. yeah. So I don't even think it was just, I don't even think it was that one female artist or even that one cuz Usher was big that summer too. I remember that. Yeah, 87801. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god. You I'm don't have to that. call. You got it. Back. Oh, you couldn't get Usher off the radio for No, you couldn't get him off the radio. <laughs> 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 no. And when he broke and cheated on Chili, you really <laughs> off the radio. Yeah. When that confessions came yeah. up. I hated Usher. Oh, I hated him. That was in high school. I hated him. I was oh. in high school. I could call some high school. That goddamn right now. You had Let It Burn, Yeah, and Confessions. Yeah. And you know what's so crazy about that album? Because almost every song on that album was a good song. Yeah. You Alicia sung it. It was just a really was good, what's her name? With the, the, Alicia the, Keys the, had just came out. Yeah. 2001. She just, that's when they and Ashanti. And Ashanti had just came out too, right? I thought she came out the end of 01. I thought it was 2002. It may have been 2002. They were trying to make her the next Aaliyah. Yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. sure the new was. princess of hip hop. Because Ashanti came out Ooh, right before Beyonce went solo. How can I stand her? But I mean, Ashanti, Ashanti did her thing. <laughs> yes, but I still didn't like that. That was when I didn't like that. And I was like, she either. can't fucking sing. You know, my two songs of Ashanti that I love was, Oh, baby, I think I like. That uh, one and um, the, when Nia Long was in a video. You got this love, right? Foolish. No, 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 baby, 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 baby. Yeah, those two songs, I love those. Oh, and Foolish was good too. It rained on me. Yeah, I look, Brand On Me is probably the song that made me like her. Yeah. That's the song right there. But when she was on top of that elephant, oh baby, I love that. I don't remember the video. I remember that very well. She was somewhere on the elephant. Virginia. She was. 2001, Black Peak was taking over the hip-hop mm -hmm. and R&B yeah. charts. It, I mean, it was like the Hot 100. Yeah. Though the top 10, there was always Black people yeah, in there. It was Janet, Destiny's Child, Jay-Z, Mystical, 112, Mystical. Usher. Mm -hmm. Wow. Alicia Keys, Jenny Wan, I said his name already. Mariah Carey. Jack that was that, 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 that downfall. downfall. Yeah, yeah, that was the downfall of Mariah Carey that year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Virgin would pay her fifty million to get off their label. <laughs> I said, her bitch. Yeah. They paid her to get there off. There was a time when Mariah Carey was not high. And that they was around that time. Paid her she to leave. They she gave, started to lose it. Because like, they gave Mariah like a they she had signed like over a hundred million like dollar contract. Yeah. She yeah. she had went on TRL. She was having a mental breakdown. She started having a mental breakdown and, and around glitter, that time. Glitter came out and, and glitter bad. bombed at the office. Flop. It bombed as a record label and I mean as a record, as an album. And um Virgin Record was like, you already getting twenty five million dollars for this album, and we're gonna give you another twenty five million to get off our label. Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Because around that time, you know what's so funny? And he's not lying. Because around that time, I definitely remember that was the point where they, you didn't see Mariah or hear from her mm -hmm. at all, and it was almost like I don't. I'm not, I'm not saying this to be mean or anything. So I don't want nobody to think I'm saying this to be mean. But when she disappeared, it was almost like you didn't even notice that she disappeared. Yeah. Because it was, be it had become this thing where, like you just read, it was so much other stuff going on that you didn't even notice that Mariah Carey wasn't even there no more. Just like Whitney Houston. <laughs> and then, um, yes. Okay. Yeah. When she came out on that BET Awards, oh my God. Yeah. No, when she came out on that Michael Jackson special. Yes, that was 2001. Yeah, that was the people before was before September 11. 11. They was like, what is going on with Whitney? Yeah. yeah. And I we knew what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> we oh, we know. Oh my God! But we just Mar didn't see it for ourselves. I didn't. I didn't really start liking Mariah until 2002. She had released this dance. She released. Well, you know how you do like your number ones, but it wasn't the number ones. It was like my my greatest hits and plus my remixes. And they had babies. You give it to me. I give it to you. Something something. I love that, and then I bought every Mariah album since then. But Mariah ain't really make her return until 2005. Yeah, with the next Oh, yeah. you couldn't escape that. And then the next year, Mary J. Blige had her re, her uh, her resurgence. Like it was, 
Music it was the research of the singers. Yeah. Of the real singers. singers. <laughs> the research of the singer. And then that surge just died off. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So while we're on this topic of music, yesterday I was able to watch the um, the launch presentation of Tidal, which is a, a high, what does it say, high fidelity, high fidelity, high fidelity music streaming. So it's supposed to be like the top of the line audio mm -hmm. for music streaming. Um, it's to me, yes, it's like Spotify and all your other music streaming services that you have out there. But what sets them apart is that they say that they have the high, the highest quality for audio, and that you have your own. It's a it's a label being owned by musicians, and it was about 18 musicians yesterday that were there: Beyonce, Rihanna, J. Cole, Nicki Minaj, Madonna, Jay Z. Um, Dead Mouse, Calvin mm -hmm. Harris, Kanye West. Kanye West, I can't name Alicia everybody. Keys. Yeah, Alicia Keys. It was Usher. A, Usher. It was a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So basically what they're coming to do, they're coming together and they're owning this music streaming service. Now, what makes this unique, not, it's not that it's only um, entertainer owned, it also um has where you can take the music that you stream and you can listen to it offline instead of you always having to be online especially for those that like to stream from their phone mm -hmm. and use up all your damn gigabytes mm -hmm. you don't have to anymore because it goes into an offline mode and you can still listen to the service of uh, the streaming which i find great and it reminds me of the zoom that microsoft came out with like back in 2008 and i never heard of any other streaming service doing it so I think that that's great that they are doing that. But other than that, I don't, you know, I don't see what, what sets it apart from all the other streaming things. I think that... Other than they got all those musicians yeah, on it. And, and I heard that they don't have all the songs from people's catalogs. Mm -hmm. Maybe because it's just starting off. Yeah. But I do think that it's great that they are all working together. And it brought, us, brought me back to what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago when I was just like, I just can't see it happening because you know people got egos and all this and that. Oh, but we talking about the, the people yeah. coming together with their own movie Ooh, companies. Yeah. But to see them happen in music, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was it's good possible. to see. Yeah. yeah, and I'm happy for Jay-Z and his, um, and his streaming service, but it's, it's going to have to... Is going to really go up against Beats Music and Spotify and I can't even, only thing I know is Spotify. That's the number one streaming thing I know. And you know what? I don't know anything about streaming. I don't do it. I don't know. I'm like stuck in 1999. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about that. But I think what, like you, when you said it's going against these other um, streaming things, but I think what the, the, the advantage that Tidal has over the others is the num the fact that these artists mm -hmm. are owners of it, and even if people don't know nothing about mm -hmm. the streaming sure system, mm -hmm. they know that their favorite artist has a stake in this. Yes. And the fact that the way ti the way title was launched, they launched this big mm -hmm. because title was all over the internet yesterday. Yeah. Everywhere you went, and I was just like, what the what, like what's going on? My sister even texted me middle of the day and was like, what's what's this title? And do you know anything about it? Like I'm like, I really don't know what's going on. I just know that all these celebrities are part of it. I don't know what's going on. I thought in the beginning, I thought that there was just this big record label that they was all coming together. <laughs> I was like, wait, are y'all leaving y'all labels and start this one? I wasn't for sure, but I think that's one of the things that they're gonna have advantage over the other um, yeah. streaming systems. But at the same time, people are still going to use Spotify and the yeah, others. I, but it, it's good to see variety. It's yeah. good to have variety. Mm -hmm. And it's good to know that your favorite artist is a part of this particular streaming system. Now, you said that they don't, they may not have a lot of songs. Yeah, I think I think what they should do is, with all the artists that were on that stage, all their music catalog better be on there mm -hmm. if it's not. Because I haven't downloaded it. I know that it's ten dollars a month for the regular streaming sound, mm -hmm. and twenty dollars a month for the high quality streaming sound. For um, now, what is that like? Let's have a beat. I, I guess <laughs> I, I don't. Because to me, all that music sound the same. Okay, I was gonna say just give me a pair of regular iPhone headphones, and I'll be cool. I don't need that shit in my ear. And um, something that's like 
I think if they really want to rival the music streaming services, they need to take their music off of those services. And if you want to hear my music on streaming, Just have it on you're going to have to buy yeah. it from my label. Yeah, yeah, I mean, my, my company. There you go. And that shut the other ones down. Yeah. Yep. And that's the only way I can see it being successful. But that, that main, that main, fuck the audio. The main thing to me is the offline move. That's the main, main. You like that? The off, yes, I do. And that would be something that I would consider if I didn't want to buy music. But I love to support people. So I buy music. But again, music, the music industry is just crazy because you have these streaming services. People are like, why would I buy your album when I could just listen to it on a streaming thing? And, and then you wonder why people don't sell, and then you want to call them flops. It's a lot that goes into it, the whole thing. But I, I think that it's great that they're doing it. I really do. I really do. I just want to see, I want to know how many of y'all signed up. Do you have it? Do you love it? Should I get it? Is it worth me spending $10? Because if, if I hear an album, I want it on there right away. A new album, I want it out like that. Mm -hmm. And how much are these artists going to get paid for having their music on there? Because they said that... So people don't really make a lot of money from streaming. That's why Taylor Swift took her songs off of Spotify. Well, they must be getting paid something. Yeah, Let me tell you something. They're getting paid something to Jason yeah. and Kanye and Madonna. Yeah. And Madonna of all people. Oh, now, are they all being paid equally? Well, See, that's, that's another thing. That's not my business. <laughs> that's a lot. It's a whole lot that, that go behind into the scenes that. when they was all at that meeting. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, it's a behind the scenes video when they were all at the meeting. I guess this was a few months ago. Because I know Nikki was at the meeting with that black wig with the bob and I, I know with the bang and I know she ain't had that for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so this ain't something that just happened overnight. They've been meeting with this, so I guess the paychecks. Yeah, they said know? that they bought out another streaming service company and it's been active since October, but they were waiting for the right time to do. And right now, bitch, it's springtime. Come and come on, like these albums ready to be getting released. ASA mm -hmm. fucking pay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So I need y'all to fix y'all music shit. Put everybody music on there. their whole catalog. Don't just uh, put one fucking album on there. But y'all let me know about it. So, um, yeah. Um, don't forget tomorrow, 5.30 p.m., Mama Scorpion and me will be taking y'all calls. And if you want to write in, you can write to cabscorp at iCloud.com. And if you have not donated to The Blackout and you would like to, please click that link inside the more info box. And we will see you guys. Well, I'm not done. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, because I had to say something real quick. I wanted to shout out everybody because, you know, about two Mondays ago, I think it was two Mondays ago, I had told everybody a movie. To I couldn't movie. find it. Well, yeah, I know. I don't know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some. I know a movie you But apparently, yeah, I, I told everybody to check out because um, a lot of people wanted me to do movie Mondays and they wanted me to suggest certain movies. So I suggested a film called Not Without My Daughter starring Sally Field. And there were a lot of people that hit me up throughout the week saying that they just saw the film and they loved it and they was like thanking me. Or there was, and there was other people who said that they had already seen it and it was a great film. So shout out to you people. I'm sorry if you guys couldn't find it. You know, it's a really old movie and I know a lot of people were saying that they saw it on Lifetime and it did used to come on Lifetime a lot of times. Um, and they may re-air it, so look out for that if you haven't seen it. But the next movie I want to excuse me, recommend to all of you is it's relatively a recent movie, but it's not that recent. It's relatively? about I said relatively. Uh, that's the name of the movie? I said it's a relatively recent oh. movie. Oh let me finish. Bitch, I thought you said relatively. Well I haven't finished. L whatever. whatever. Go ahead. It's a relatively relatively recent movie. Recent movie. Yes, so <laughs> it's a rel relatively recent movie. Um it came out in 2007, and it stars two Academy Award winners, Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe, and that film is American Gangster. And I am recommending this movie because I saw this movie. I remember this movie first came out, and I went to the movies to go see it. And then I remember I was I had linked up with a few of my friends, and we were trying to figure out a movie to go see. And they was like, "Well, you know, let's go see American Gangster," because they hadn't seen it, but I had already seen it. And I was like, "Well, I loved it so much that I want to go see it again." And I don't do that that often. I don't go to the movies twice because you know tickets is high at the movies, mm -hmm. so I don't do that. So I went to go see it for a second time. But I just want to say this is a really good gangster movie. This movie, to me, puts me in the mind of the old school gangster movies, how good they used to be. So if you guys have not seen American Gangster with Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe, please make sure you guys look that up. You can either... I, you know what? I can't even recommend Netflix because they don't have shit on there. Hulu may have it. 
Or if not, you where's another movie place that they can go? I can't even Amazon see how I would pay it because those DVD places ain't even out there. Amazon Prime. You can rent movies on iTunes too. Okay, so you can search, you know, check it out on there. But if you have, or I know they even have it on YouTube, but they have it bro broken up. Mm -hmm. But make sure you guys check this film out, American Gangster. It's a really good movie. It stars Denzel Washington, Russell Crowe, and Ruby D. Um, this is the film that she was nominated for an Oscar for. Um, so, yeah, make sure you guys check this out. And if you do see it, hit me up and let me know how you guys liked it. And if you already seen it, let me know how you Okay. Oh, and it also stars T.I. and Idris Elba. And the guy, I can't I can never pronounce his name, the one who played in Twelve Years a Slave. Chibato Edge. Yes. Mm-hmm. So make sure you guys check out this film, American Gangster, okay? Alright, I'm done. I can talk now. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Hopefully. And look, if y'all have never seen enough with Jennifer Lopez, y'all need to go watch it. It's on Netflix. And that's my motherfucking movie. And then May in Manhattan starring Jennifer Lopez is also on there too. So check those out. Those are one is a thriller and one is just a fun romance. Well, I'm sorry, who was doing? I just say, hey, go ahead and watch it. Who was doing? If you can't find American <laughs> <laughs> And bitch, y'all need to get into the haves and the have nots, because I seen it on DVR on own. And get into Sweetie Pies, because I caught up with some of the episodes. But I didn't see the one just past weekend. And Ray J was on there. Mm -hmm. And they, I know she's trying to go to L.A. and all that stuff. I, I just don't... Never mind, I'm not going to say uh, that. I don't do that. Because <laughs> I know where you're going. And we're not doing that. Ah! We're not. Let's not go there. Because <laughs> I know you can. And I will. And I will. Because I already went there. But I'm just trying to figure out. <laughs> okay? Like, what the fuck? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Wait, that's it. Do you do you watch Black? You still watch Black Ink Crew? I do, but I haven't been catching up with it. But I do. I mean, I catch up with it from time to time. The last episode I saw was when Oh Shit's mistress and his baby mom got into a fight at the restaurant, mm -hmm. and then the girlfriend tried to jump out the cab and beat the girl. His mistress, I mean, his wife. I'll call her his wife, even though she's not his wife. But his baby mom jumped out the cab after they was fighting. Jumped out the cab to go hit. To go fight the mistress again and then got her foot ran over. Oh no! While she's pregnant. And she's not pregnant. Did somebody ran over? Little her? Pregnant. Yeah, she got ran over by a car. I think the car that she jumped out of ran over her foot. Mm. And she's not a month pregnant. She's like showing big pregnant. Mm. And I think sprained her ankle or broke her ankle or something like foot or something. Sure. Like. The baby was fine though. Yeah, sure. she didn't get paid. She just, her foot just got ran over. Did you hear about the lady? That um, ran through the, the, the Chinese nail, but well, the Vietnamese nail salon today. No. Rolled all the way through because she thought that she was hitting the brakes and it was still hitting the accelerator. Killed somebody. Oh, no. And like Lesser. three other people was injured. Lesser. It was sad. It was sad. Right up um, on the 90 Andrew block of Buster's Avenue. Yeah. Well, look, we're going to go. Y'all have a good weekend. I mean, no, have a good. Week. Week. We'll be back Friday.